Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with a festive themed After Effects tutorial for you to get your teeth into. Uh, now as you can see we've got uh, a lot of elements in here but you may be surprised to find out that every single one of them with the exception of the red ribbon bow is actually created from scratch within After Effects itself. It'll probably take two parts to get this tutorial nailed down um, but in this first part I hope to cover the background and uh, how to create the baubles you can see um, in the foreground and background of this project. So uh, that's enough of an introduction, let's get started. So I'm going to create a new composition and uh, as always I'm using the 720p preset. Um, I've set the duration for 30 seconds long and we're going to call this final comp and just hit enter. Now I'm just going to run through the first couple of elements fairly quickly because I've already covered the techniques uh, in other videos on this YouTube channel. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new solid and we'll call this green background and surprise surprise we'll actually make it green and just hit OK. Now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just jazz it up a bit with the four color gradient so just drag that from your effects panel onto the green background now with the eyedropper I'm just going to uh, select the green um, that we chose for the solid colour and with the other eyedroppers I'll just copy that green so that when I click on the colour selector I can uh, choose similar tones in the same range so we're just kind of looking for dark and light variations and I'll just increase the blend to about 150 and the next thing I'm going to do is create a radial ray effect. So right click in your timeline panel and select new shape. And with the uh, shape layer selected, click and hold your rectangle tool to select the star tool. And we'll just double click on the star tool to uh, create a default star in the center of the frame. Now it's not quite what we're after at the moment. For starters, I want to get rid of the, uh, the stroke outline and uh, the fill color I'll eyedropper one of the paler elements in the background color that we've already created. Now twirl down the uh, polystar settings and go to polystar path. We're going to increase the points quite dramatically so uh, take them to about 45. Drop the inner radius right down. We'll take it down to about 20 and then hold down shift because you want to make the uh, outer radius quite large and just drag it in uh, increments of 10 that's what holding down shift will do until it's about 3000 in fact it's probably just easier to type 3000 in to begin with and hit OK now the outer roundness you can increase that to about 75% and as you can see it provides us with this uh, quick and easy radial ray effect. Now I think I've got a few too many points in here so I'm just going to drag that right down from 45 to 15 and uh, I'll increase the outer roundness a little bit further, take that up to 100%. Now I don't want this uh, radial ray effect um, smack in the middle so uh, twirl down the transform properties for the polystar and we'll just drag the position values until the center of the radial rays are down in the bottom right hand corner. So at the moment we're looking at 298 by 97. Now a couple more things I want to do before I'm finished with this. Select the shape layer and hit T to bring up the opacity values and I'm just going to drop the opacity down to about 35%. Just to blend it in and in the effects and presets panel type in fast blur and we'll just grab the fast blur effect and drop it onto the shape layer and increase the blur to about 20 and we'll also toggle the uh, repeat edge pixels just to avoid getting a dark edge so that's a nice subtle effect we've created um, to use as the background just to finish it off I'm going to duplicate the uh, green background and remove the four color gradient from it. I'm going to drag that up to the top 
we'll go to the uh, ellipse tool and double click it to create a uh, standard ellipse which is uh, a mask in this case change the mask properties from add to subtract with the mask selected type F to get the feather properties up and just increase the feather to about 125 and then hit T to bring up the opacity and drop that down to about 45% and that just gives us a little bit more tone and uh, texture for the background. Now I'm also going to animate the radial rays so uh, go back to your shape layer make sure the timeline indicator is at the beginning of your composition and uh, twirl down the contents and the polystar and then the transform um, properties for the polystar. Don't mix this up with the transform properties for the layer that's not what we want. We want to make sure we're working with the polystar itself. So find the rotation value in the transform polystar section and uh, hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe at the beginning. Hit end on the keyboard to take your timeline indicator to the end of the timeline and we'll just give it one revolution by typing one into the first section. So if we just scrub through the timeline you'll see we've got a slowly rotating radial ray effect in the background. So I can pretty much call that finished. I'm just going to uh, select all those layers and hit Control, Shift and C to shift them into a pre-comp. And we'll call this background pre-comp. Uh, move all the attributes into the new composition and hit OK. OK, so that's the background done. And now we just need to add a few decorations. And we do this by creating a new composition. And make sure the lock aspect ratio box is unchecked and change the width to 1000 and the height to 500 and we'll call this ball texture 1 and hit OK. Now as you can see that gives us this uh, slightly elongated frame but the reasons for that will become clear in a moment. So we're just going to create a straight rectangle and uh, pick a nice festive colour. Let's go with a nice icy blue with a stroke of white you want to make the stroke fairly meaty, so we'll uh, type in 75 pixels for this one. And scroll that to give yourself a bit of room. And just draw a couple of rectangles at the top and bottom. That'll give you this kind of licorice all sort um, look and feel. Now I'm going to get the pen tool. And I'm just going to create a point on the left hand side of the frame and hold down shift that'll lock it to a vertical and click once on the right hand side of the frame to create a uh, straight line. Now this one's a little bit thick so I'm going to drop that to about 50 pixels and I might just nudge it up so it's a little bit more central. Now in the effects and presets panel I want you to find the uh, wave warp effect so drag that onto your second shape layer and it creates this rather funky uh, rippled wave now this is actually animated by default and we don't want that so we're just going to turn the wave speed off by uh, typing 0 in and that'll just keep it as a static um, wave. Now let's go back to our final comp and bring the ball texture 1 into it and that's what it looks like. To turn it into a ball go to the effects and presets panel and find the CC sphere effect and just apply that to your ball texture and you get this effect. Now um, obviously it's a transparent layer and now you can leave it like that if you want to make it a little bit more interesting. If you want to get rid of that just create a new solid and we'll make that, or what we make it, I might match that to the uh, top colour and we'll drag that to the bottom. Okay so that's a little bit more appropriate. Get back to our final comp and there you have the uh, start of our, our Christmas decoration. Now it's a little bit flat at the moment, so uh, there's just a few things I want to do to it. So with the ball texture layer selected, go to your light settings in the CC sphere, and we're going to change the light direction, so it's uh, coming down from the top left, so set it to minus 35, and we'll uh, take the light height down to about 35. Tool down the shading properties and we'll just increase the ambient to about 22 to fill it out a bit 
and uh, we'll increase the specular highlight which is that little uh, dot of light up to about 75 and just to make it a little bit more interesting um, we'll increase the reflective part of it so uh, just take it up to about 8 and it'll add a little bit more uh, reflection and interest to it I'm just going to nudge that a uh, little bit further down and uh, now you can repeat that process for as many uh, Christmas decorations as you want so I'll uh, I'll just pause it there, go and create a couple more, and uh, we'll come back in a second. Okay, so I've basically created uh, three different patterns and uh, brought them into the final composition, and then just copy and pasted the CC Sphere effect from our first ball onto the remaining two. So uh, our next thing to do is create a uh, red ribbon, and that's pretty simple. Go to your pen tool again, select a nice dark red for your stroke and make it about 100 pixels wide I'm just going to click at the top of the frame hold down shift to lock it to a vertical and uh, just click a little bit further down we're just going to drag the uh, shape layer so it sits beneath the uh, ball texture and I'm just going to duplicate that a couple of times and nudge the remaining layers to behind the other balls that we've got on screen. Okay, so it's start starting to take shape now. Now, about the only area where I really cheated on this is uh, with the, the bow. Now, uh, if you go to my website to get this project file, the, uh, the PSD file for the bow will also be included. <coughs> so I'm just going to drag that and drop it into place. Now it's a little bit bright at the moment, but don't worry, we'll be, uh, we'll be fixing that later. And again, duplicate that a couple of times. And just drop that into the relevant place on the other decorations. So just to uh, match it up a little bit, I'm going to go to the Effects and Presets panel and find the Levels tool. And we'll just drag that onto the first bow image. I'm just going to bring down the white level to darken it off and you can see that uh, that blends it in with the ribbon color that we've picked rather nicely so uh, now that I'm happy with that I'll uh, copy that levels effect and just apply it to the remaining two bows now I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping because uh, it'll be important later I'm just going to create um, little groups of bow ball texture and ribbon. Okay, so uh, we've got the, the basic um, elements all arranged the way we want it, but you know, let's face it, they're still not looking hugely realistic. Um, so we're going to do a couple of things just to really sell this effect. Um, so I'll just uh, solo the one in the middle so we can work with that and you can see, uh, see how it works. With the ball texture selected, right click and uh, select layer styles and inner glow I'll tool down the settings and we'll just pick a uh, nice kind of light turquoisey green color for the glow and we'll increase the size significantly to about uh, 35 and we'll drop the opacity down just a little bit down to 50% and as you can see, that uh, gives you that kind of nice uh, haloed effect, which really sells the idea that it's a reflective sphere. So uh, now we've uh, set it up the way we want. We can apply that to the bow and the shape layer just by copying and pasting it. And uh, that instantly makes it look a little bit, uh, little bit more appealing. And I think the bow is just a little bit uh, bleached out by the layer style, so we'll just... Uh, Twill down the uh, inner glow settings and just reduce the size a touch. So we'll take that down to uh, 20. Okay, so now we've got the uh, the originals back. You can see what a huge difference it's made. So uh, you can go ahead now and either repeat the process or just copy and paste the effects onto the uh, remaining groups. Okay, something else you can do just to uh, increase the 
um, reflective nature of these uh, decorations. We're just going to create a quick um, ellipse with a white fill and no stroke. And I'm just going to draw a white ellipse over the uh, bottom of the sphere. And we'll just uh, get the fast blur and feather that out. Hit T to bring up the opacity value and just drop it down to about 50%. Then uh, go to the blending mode and select Add. Okay, that's a little bit too much. We'll just uh, drop the opacity down a little bit further, maybe down to 30%. And we'll just increase the blur to about 66. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the the way they're looking so far, but I'm not quite sold on the uh, the uh, ribbons yet. So what I'm going to do with the first bow, just zoom in so you can see this, so I'm going to duplicate it, select the layer beneath, and go to the pen tool, and create a quick mask, which just isolates the bottom section. from the top. Now all we need to do is just right click and select layer styles and drop shadow. And if we go to the drop shadow values, I'm going to increase the size just to spread it out a little bit. And maybe just drop the uh, opacity down to about 50%. I'm just going to take the uh, opacity back up to 80%, really sell this effect. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate that and uh, apply it to the remaining bows. Okay, so now we're cooking. Um, pretty much happy with the, uh, with the balls now, so uh, all we really need to do is just select the groups of elements that make up these balls and hit Control Shift and C to pre-comp. And uh, that's about it for now. Um, hopefully I'll have the chance to wrap this one up, if you'll pardon the pun, um, with the second part sometime over the next couple of days. So once again, I uh, hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part two.